Welcome to this public meeting of the Consumer Product Safety Commission. Today, we're considering a staff draft notice of proposed rulemaking to establish safety requirements to prevent debris penetration in off highway vehicles. Now, before we get started, I'm pleased to announce that today is our first online meeting with ASL translation. Our ASL translator will be visible as a panelist throughout the duration of our meeting. To see our translator full screen, you can simply drag their thumbnail to the stage. So, today we're considering an important proposed rule and a key step in the Commission's efforts to improve the safety of off highway vehicles. The rule proposed is straightforward. It requires that all recreational off highway vehicles and utility task vehicles be designed to prevent debris from penetrating the floorboards of vehicles. If a vehicle is designed to go off road and travel through rough terrain, it should be able to withstand a branch or a large stick from penetrating the seat area in normal operations, which would potentially injure or kill the occupants. We were briefed on this proposal in May, and today we will consider amendments and I expect in the end uh, approved publication of the proposal in the Federal Register. There are several staff members present at this meeting. Uh, with us are two members of our staff who briefed us on this proposal in May. Han Lim, Project Manager, Director for Engineering Sciences, and Barbara Little, Attorney in the Regulatory Affairs Div Division. Also in attendance are Alex Moscoso, Associate Executive Director for Economic Analysis, Dwayne Boniface, Ex Assistant Executive Director, Austin Schlick, General Counsel, and Alberta Mills, the Commission Secretary. Each commissioner will have five minutes for questions or comments, and after the questions are complete, we'll con then consider any amendments. Once again, I remind everybody, while it's perfectly permissible to voice your personal opinions on legal issues, it's not appropriate to discuss any legal advice given to us by the Office of General Counsel outside of executive session. The legal advice we receive must remain confidential. Uh, at this point, I would again thank staff for attending and for the briefing materials prior to this and turn to questions rounds. I personally do not have any questions, so I'll turn to Commissioner Biacco. And actually, before I do that, I realize I probably just should confirm for the record that all the commissioners are present. So, um, Commissioner Biacco, are you present? Yes, sir. Commissioner Feldman? Present. Commissioner Trumka. Present. So turning back to questions, uh, I turn to Commissioner Bianca. Did you have any questions? You want to say anything? No, thank you, Chair. I do not. Commissioner Feldman? No questions at this time. Thank you. Commissioner Trumka? Questions for me either. Thank you. Great. Uh, having heard no questions, staff excuse me, we'll begin consideration of the package before us. Um, I will now entertain any amendments up to the draft proposed rule. I'm going to actually start with myself. I have one amendment and recognize myself for three minutes to introduce it. Now, this amendment is straightforward. It clarifies that the rule applies to all vehicles that meet the definition of an ROV or a UTV, regardless of their marketing. The proposed rule itself, as, as was brought forth to us, is clear on this. But the draft preamble included language that suggested that youth ROVs were excluded from the requirements of the rule. The amendment simply matches the language in the preamble to the requirements of the rule. Uh, we have an obligation to protect the most vulnerable among us. At this point, I don't see a reason to exclude vehicles built for children from, safe, uh, from a safety requirement. I understand that there are some cases, uh, there may be differences in the way that Mar uh, vehicles marketed for use are built, and if the different construction limits the risk, that's worth considering. And I invite commenters to provide additional information as to safety aspects of those designs. But I also want to make clear any exclusion should be based on uh, evidence that the vehicles don't pose a safety hazard and not simply on how the, the vehicles are being marketed. Is there a second to this amendment? Second. Second. Thank you. Having heard a second, I move forward to consideration of the amendment. Other commissioners will ask any questions or make any comments with respect to the amendment. Um, then I will provide myself an opportunity to close. Each commissioner will have five minutes per round and multiple rounds if necessary. Um, 
Uh, I recognize Commissioner Biacco. Did you have any questions or comments? Um, thank you, Chair. Um, I appreciate the amendment. It was necessary to clear up this discrepancy. Thank you for um, picking it up and for presenting the amendment. I have nothing further. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Feldman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I think the amendment also makes sense. Uh, I, we want the preamble and the, uh, the, the the text of the rule to match each other. And I think having that internal in, uh, consistency is important, uh, not only for industry and, and other stakeholders, but uh, uh, just eliminating potential ambiguity makes this clear. So I think for those reasons, I'm, I'm supportive. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Trumka. No, I. I um... No questions on this. Thank you for introducing it. I agree with the, the sentiment of my fellow commissioners and I, I do support it. Thank you. Um, well, with those comments, I don't actually have anything to add at this point in time. So I would uh, you know, thank my fellow commissioners for their engagement and move to the vote on it. Uh, Commissioner Biacco. I vote yes. Commissioner Feldman. I vote yes. Commissioner Trumka. I vote yes. And I vote yes as well. So the yeses are four, the noes are zero, and the amendment of the chair is adopted. Turning to other commissioner amendments, uh, Commissioner Biacco, did you have any amendments? I do not. Thank you. Commissioner Feldman, do you have any amendments? No amendments for me. Thank you. And Commissioner Trumka, do you have any amendments? I do. I have uh, four actually. No. All right, um, why don't we start with your 1st amendment? I recognize you and if you can describe your, uh, amendment and. After the conclusion of the description, I will ask for a 2nd. Great, so the, the 1st amendment deals with anti stockpiling and it would. Have done Commissioner Trump, yeah, I lost you for a minute in your volume. Can you, um. Start again. Sure, uh, is, is that any better? That is good. Okay. So the, the 1st amendment, um, deals with anti stockpiling and it would adopt the same anti stockpiling language that we adopted in our proposed rule on clothing storage units. Uh, currently, the proposed rule lets companies pick their best year of production in the past 5 years and produce at 125% of their fastest rate of production. Uh, in the months after rules published, but before it takes effect, that allows companies to build a, a hefty stockpile of non compliant products that if a rules published would have meant that we deemed. Those products too dangerous to exist. So, so this amendment changes the base period to the median month in the past 13 months, uh, and it would change the allowable in, uh, increase in production from 120% of the base period to 105% of the base period. Thank you, Commissioner. Is there a second for the amendment? Come second. Um, having heard a second, uh, you'd go. Th through uh, questions or comments for on this amendment. So I'll recognize myself for five minutes and say, Commissioner Trumpka, you know, this, as you mentioned, is an amendment you brought up before in the context of clothing storage uh, rule, and I supported it at that point in time. And I think it's right to question uh, how we handle stockpiling and how much of a product should be made in the months leading up to an effective date um, and the safety implications. In the end, we need to strike a balance between what's consistent with our statutes, um, fair to manufacturers while prioritizing protecting consumers. And I believe that issues should be felt fleshed out in the common process and support the amendment for that purpose and yield back the remainder of my time. Turning to Commissioner Biacco, did you have any questions or comments? Thank you, Chair Honsarek. Um, uh, thank you also, Mr. Trumka, for the amendment. I do agree that we should be moving these rules along and not giving loopholes where they're not necessary. So I support the amendment. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Feldman. Uh, thank you, and, and thank you, Commissioner Trumka, for introducing uh, th this amendment again. Of, of course, we don't want uh, manufacturers to circumvent the intended safety benefits of the rule by engaging in stockpiling. Um, the, the 1 note of caution that I, I would want to sound uh, is that we all know that uh, our, our nation has been impacted by significant supply chain concerns uh, and, and these challenges persist. It's unclear to me at this point how ROV and UTV manufacturers have been able to meet uh, these supply disruptions and how that perhaps has delayed sort of current production capacity. Um, so at, at this point, I, I think we want to maintain some uh, maintain some flexibility in the final rule uh, with the 
supply chain issues and 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 we can revisit this in the final rule if appropriate. So I think for now I'm comfortable uh, including the provision in the NPR so we can solicit comments. Um, but sort of based on what we know about the supply chain and the lack of information that we currently have, I, I do want to hear from stakeholders um, about what their inventory looks like, uh, what the state of production is, and, and and where we might go from 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 here in the future. Uh, but again, thank you for the provision. I, I look forward to supporting it. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Trumka, did you have any final thoughts? Just a thank you to my fellow commissioners for engaging on this and uh, nothing else. Great, then I can turn to a vote at this point in time. Commissioner Biacco, how do you vote? Oh, yes. Commissioner Feldman. I vote yes. Commissioner Trumka. I vote yes. And I vote yes as well. So the yeses are four, the vows are noes are zero. The amendment, uh, the first amendment of Commissioner Trumka is adopted. He said the. It, you want to start on your second amendment and describe it, Commissioner? Sure, thank you. Um, so the second amendment uh, deals with effective date. It would align the effective date in the proposed rule with staff's analysis. This could comply with the new requirements in at most four months. So rather than 180 days, which is the statutory max, amendment would change that to an effective date of 100. At the same time, the amendment would seek Commissioner public you're cutting in and out. If you can just lean into the mic, I'm not sure why it's doing that, but um, I've heard most I'll, of what I'll you said. Up close. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry about that. Is it a little bit better now? Yeah. Okay. So um, I, I'll just start that again, but it, it would align the effective date in the proposed rule with staff's assessment. Staff, staff assessed that it would take companies at most uh, four months to, to comply with the requirements. So rather than 180 days, which is the, the statutory max under, under our statute for an effective date, the amendment would change that to a 120 day effective date. And at the same time, it would seek public comment on whether that's the appropriate period or if any shorter period uh, is appropriate. Thank you. Uh, is there a second for the amendment? Thank you for the second. Um, turn to questions and comments next. Recognize myself for five minutes, uh, Commissioner Trumpke. Once again, thank you for continuing your focus on ensuring you know, product safety rules go into effect as quickly as practicable. Um, supporting your efforts to shorten the effective dates on other in other proposed uh, notice of proposed rulemaking and to seek comment on the appropriate length of time. And I look forward to seeing robust comments on this issue as well. And giving the staff the information they need to make an informed proposal on the final rule. So I will support this amendment and urge my colleagues to do the same and yield back the remainder of my time. Commissioner Bianco. Yes, thank you. Um, and thank you, Commissioner Trumka. Um, I, I, on this particular um, amendment, uh, in this particular situation, I, I, I pause as to whether the time period is too short. Um, but that being said, I think um, this particular commission has recognized uh, under your, certainly by your leadership here on this issue uh, that these safety rules need to get into effect and the, uh, there's just too much time that the safety issues are not getting addressed. So um, I'm going to stay consistent and I'm going to support the amendment um, with the caveat that if we do receive comments that we need to revisit the time period that we will um, take a take a closer look at that. But in the meantime, I do support um, moving the, this rule and a lot of uh, the rules that we make forward. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Feldman. Thank you, uh, and, and again, thank you, Commissioner Trumpka, for offering this. This is uh, the the fourth such amendment that that uh, you've introduced, and uh, I, counting the votes, it, it, it sounds like uh, much like. Colgate versus Cornell during your playing years, you're about to go four and out. Um, <laughs> but, but I am concerned uh, that, that because this particular rule that we're proposing would likely result in, in a substantial redesign for a number of the ROVs and UTVs that are on the market that we should allow sufficient time for uh, designing and testing. It's been the, the commission's position that uh, in the past, the design and test processes for ROVs is similar to the processes that uh, auto manufacturers apply um, with respect to model years uh, when, it, when it comes to new vehicles. And it, we've proposed longer compliance dates, for example, when we uh, proposed a, a seatbelt rule for ROV occupant protection back in 2014. 
and because the commission understood at the time that that manufacturers needed to redesign and test uh we, we did opt for a bit of a longer time period and with the debris penetration proposal that's currently in front of us I'm told that uh, that staff also considered sort of the model year approach when uh, proposing the 180 day effective date. So, according to staff, based on the questions that we asked, typically a manufacturer needs at least one model year uh, to retool and 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 make the design changes and test. Uh, and 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 that's all you know somewhat involved. Uh, and here. Uh, staff thinks 180 days is appropriate. So pr presumably the changes that we're proposing could be implemented within those 180 days. Uh, I, I think that date makes sense. Uh, and for those reasons, I think I'm comfortable uh, uh, not uh, keeping the effective date as it is and not, not shortening, shortening it beyond what, uh, what staff has proposed. I, I think that said, uh, I, I'd be open to hearing the, the comments from, uh, from, from, from manufacturers and, and other stakeholders about uh, uh, whether or not this is something we may want to revisit on the back end. I'd also note that that I put this product category in a slightly different uh, 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 category than than where we've done this previously, for instance, on magnets and window coverings. Uh, in, in the former, we were talking about uh, essentially what amounted to a, amounted to a product ban. Uh, in, in the latter, uh, we were dealing with an industry that had reneged on some commitments that it made uh, to the commission uh, and also that had um, sort of established that proof of uh, of concept and, and uh, engineering viability uh, because it had already uh, shown that that redesign could work with respect to stock products and what we're pro proposing here today is is slightly different uh, so I, i'm a no i'm open to hearing uh, the, the the comments that we receive uh, and uh, I, I appreciate the, the effort and the sentiment. Of course, we want to move these rules along as quickly as possible. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Trumka, did you have any uh, additional comments? Well, the, my only comment, and I thank you for all that. There is no way that we went 4-0 again. I'm gonna have to go back and check the record. Oh, you're you're cutting out again. I'm sorry, but you know. No, no more comments. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, so, hearing no additional comments, um, thank my fellow commissioners for engagement and move to vote to a vote. Commissioner Biacco. You may be muted. I vote yes. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Feldman. I vote no. Commissioner Trumka. Yes. And I vote yes. So the yeses are three, the noes are one, and then a uh, second amendment of Commissioner Trumka uh, is adopted. I go to your third amendment, Commissioner. Sure. And and I hope I don't cut out on this one because there's a. Um, it stop me if I if if I do start cutting out there, but but this. This one addresses evaluation of benefits, um, the way that we look at them in the cost analysis, and that's for public comment on whether we should consider any to hear from people on that subject. For example, our briefing package says that we know about at least 634 uh, debris penetration incidents and at least 11 associated injuries uh, from our OHV recall data between 2014 and 2016. But we don't currently account for those uh, incidents in our benefit cost analysis. Instead, our analysis assumes that 105 total incidents involving the brief penetration occurred from 2009 to 2021, and further assumes that only 22 non fatal injuries and six deaths occurred from 2009 to 2021. Uh, those data appear in our NICE and CPS RMS databases. And the way our estimate of benefits works. We make a forecast of future incidents that would occur without our rule, and then we estimate that our rule would prevent 95% of them. Um, that whole forecast builds on the NICE and CPS RMS incidents instead of the larger number of incidents that we have in the recall data. In, in every year going forward, our estimates of injuries prevented, uh, incidents prevented, and deaths prevented are likely undercounted and undervalued because they're based on a subset of our data, not all of our data. So it's possible that accounting for all those incidents in our recall data uh, combined with NICE and CPS RMS incidents could make a difference. So we see comment on, on this assessment of our analysis and how we might account for the larger number of incidents in our data inside that, inside that cost analysis. 
the second point on that is that the current analysis doesn't forecast how many incidents, injuries, and deaths are would prevent across the whole country. Uh, because we're dealing with a relatively small number of incidents captured in NICE and CPS RMS, uh, we couldn't make a national estimate from those sources alone. And, and I get that. Um, but there could be other sources of data that we could use to supplement what we have and get an estimate of what's happening across the country, including data from industry that we haven't yet seen. Uh, it'd be great to hear from the public on whether we could tap other sources of data to, to get an understanding of the full national picture. Uh, but even if, if we've used all the data that's out there, I'd still like to see public comment on if we could get better about making plausible assumptions instead of assuming that we've captured 100% of incidents. So, in fact, OMB has a guidance document on this, uh, Circular 84, and it advises agencies that when benefits are uncertain, there's no scientifically valid way to estimate them, or, and there's no scientifically valid way to estimate them. We should, quote, describe benefits or costs under plausible scenarios and characterize the evidence and assumptions underlying each scenario. So I'd like to hear comments on how we could incorporate that thinking here. And then third, when a side by side gets seriously damaged, even if you come out without a scratch on your body, you still need to get the vehicle fixed. And that takes time and money. And for anyone who uses one of these for work, say on a farm, uh, that's even worse. They could be out some real money. So our analysis doesn't currently count that. Uh, any benefits that, that are proposed will create by avoiding those incidents. And I'd like to hear comments from people on that, especially from people who, who use these vehicles uh, and the cost they might face after an incident. So, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Is there a second for this amendment? Second. Thank you. Turn to questions and comments, and I'll just start with myself quickly and say, I think asking for additional information on these issues and the comment process is important, and if approved, i be very interested in seeing what we learn from this, and so we'll be supportive. Commissioner Bianco? Thank you. Um, I'm going to support this amendment, Commissioner Trumpka, but for um, some of the exact opposite reasons why uh, you presented it. And I know that may not make sense in the beginning, but um, let me explain. First of all, I agree that our current analysis isn't, it doesn't include data. There's lots of other so sources of data out there, and I do think they need to be taken into consideration. It is an issue that I have um, in, in many instances. I think that we rely too heavily on, you know, NIST data and um, very limited um, data um, pots, if you will. Uh, so I do think that we need to look at um, other sources of data. Um, I, I am, am not a big supporter of this associated incident information. And this is where I disagree with you, but I'm going to support your amendment for, for really uh, uh, the same reasons as it turns out. Um, when we do have uh, associated incidents, the importance to me is, should they all be included? Yes, we should analyze every single one of them, but to the extent that they're only associated with and do not uh, represent you know, some type of causal relationship to the result, that should also be considered. So um, not only should we um, uh, look at these all of these incidents deeper, but they need to be analyzed and looked at appropriately for what they are and for what they are not. Um, I, I'm not convinced that NICE is um, as accurate as, as it needs to be to make a uh, causal connection between problems that we see with any product, including uh, this particular class um, and, and a uh, product hazard, if you will. So um, uh, the opposite view may be of yours, but comes out at the same place. Uh, additional data I think is important. I think we should uh, have been taking information from outside sources for a long time, and this is as good a place as any to start as to what other um, sources there are. And I do think we ought to be looking at our data in, in a deeper, more analytical way, rather than just counting up slash marks of associated incidents. So for that reason, I will support your amendment. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Feldman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and, and again, thank you, Commissioner Trump for the amendment. Um, I, I'm also supportive. Uh, I do want to sound a, a brief note of caution to the, the commission. Uh, we have a dedicated team of professional economists whose job it is to consider what factors are considered appropriate for the purposes of uh, conducting cost benefit analysis under the rule. And I, I wouldn't want, this is a, a, a strong rule that we have right now. I wouldn't want to put the final rule in jeopardy um, because the valuation of benefits wasn't completed in a, a holistic manner. 
Uh, I don't think we should be putting the thumb on the scale one way or the other to reach a desired uh, outcome with respect to where we would want the CBA uh, ultimately to end up. Um, so with that, I do think it's a good idea uh, to receive information from the public here. And, and, and for that reason, I'm going to offer my support. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, turning back to Commissioner Trumka, if any closing, closing thoughts. Sure. Uh, again, just my thanks. Uh, no, I lost you again. Can you try that? Yeah. More? yeah. Yeah, I, I just wanted to say that I, I really appreciate how we can think about things from different perspectives. All right, I lost you after thinking from different perspectives. That's the gist of it, I guess. <laughs> uh, thank you, Commissioner. Um, with that, I will turn to a vote. Uh, Commissioner Bianco, how do you vote? You may be muted. All right, I vote yes. Thank you. Commissioner Feldman. I vote yes. Commissioner Trump. Yes. And I vote yes as well. So the yeses are four, the noes are zero. And the third amendment by Commissioner Trumka is adopted. Uh, turning to your fourth amendment, Commissioner Trumka. Thank you. And and the um, the fourth one short, uh, it, it's it's two small changes to remove uh, superfluous information that might inadvertently give the wrong impression here. So our proposed rule refers twice to the fact that we have data seatbelt use, even though there's nothing in the briefing package to suggest that consumers wearing not wearing relevant to um, to whether it could, you know contribute free punching through their floorboards and. I just want to make sure that we're not accidentally suggesting that there's any consumer fault with that issue. And, and so this amendment would just remove those 2 references. Thank you commissioner. Is there a 2nd. Second? Second. Thank you commissioner. Um, hearing a 2nd, we'll move to questions or comments. I will recognize myself for 5 minutes and commissioner. Trumka, thank you again for raising this. Thank you. Raise a good. Point when we think about the safety of off road vehicles, we often think about driver behavior, including decisions about whether to wear a seatbelt or not. And in the case of debris penetration, the presence or absence of seatbelt um, really is not relevant to whether there's an injury. Um, I support your amendment to remove the language um, and yield back the remaining uh, remainder of my time. Commissioner Biacco. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Trump, I find myself again supporting your amendment for the opposite reasons. Um, I, I do appreciate the clarification you have here. Um, I do think that um, I, I don't think that the, the language here was intended to blame the user. Um, and uh, but I do think that the clarification is necessary because whether or not they were using a seatbelt is is not relevant to the actual issue we're looking at. So the clarity is, is necessary. Um, I, I, I don't straight across the board believe that um, usage of the product is, is necessarily victim, victim blaming. I mean, there is there are situations for misuse. Again, not relevant exactly here, um, but I think that we ought to be uh, clearer um, and taking out that information I think is, is important here. So I do support it. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Feldman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and thank you again, uh, Commissioner Trump, for, for the amendment. Uh, uh, this this is uh, an amendment that, that I do have some issues with. Uh, I, I think it goes beyond just sort of general edits, and I, I, I don't I don't I, I don't believe it's victim blaming. Uh, but I'm also not sure collecting information and soliciting comments on seatbelt use is uh, is totally superfluous here either. Um, I've reviewed the edits that that you're suggesting. I do have some concerns. I'm concerned that. That striking reference to seatbelt use might well eliminate important data that we would want to consider and, and comments that, that may well be relevant to the analysis here. I don't know that seatbelt use is, uh, is is related to the uh, hazard at issue, but I also can't say that it's not. Um, at a minimum, I, I think we would want to, to uh, have that information in place. For example, if the commission wanted to study the phenomenon of, of risk compensation, where you see uh, uh, users engage in, in riskier behavior uh, with with uh, 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 certain safety uh, uh, mechanisms and technologies in place, uh, I, I think that might be important data. I don't know that that uh, the presence or, or use of a, a seatbelt is relevant to the positioning 
of uh, a vehicle occupant, um, and, and that may be relevant to uh, uh, penetration and impalement. Uh, it, it, it may not be. I think more information is better. Uh, so for, for that reason, I'm uncomfortable with with the one particular edit with respect to, to seatbelt use. I don't think it has anything to do with victim blaming. Uh, but but unfortunately, I, I am a no on this amendment for that reason. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, turning back to you, Commissioner Trump, if you have any final thoughts. No, just just to thank you for the consideration. With that, uh, we'll turn to a vote. Commissioner Biaco, how do you vote? I vote yes. Thank you. Commissioner Feldman, how do you vote? I vote no. Commissioner Trumka, how do you vote? Yes. And I will vote yes. So the yeses are three, the noes are one. Uh, the fourth amendment by Commissioner Trumka is adopted. Don't believe you have any other addition, uh, other amendments. Is that correct, Commissioner Trumka? That's all for me. Thank you. All right. Hearing no additional amendments, I move to uh, the staff's uh, draft notice of proposed uh, rulemaking as amended and to direct publication of the same in the Federal Register. Is there a second? Second. Right. We have a second. Can move to a vote. Uh, Commissioner Biaco, how do you vote? I vote yes. Commissioner Feldman, how do you vote? I vote yes. Commissioner Trunka? I vote yes. And I vote yes as well. So there are four yeses, zero noes. The motion to approve the staff's notice of proposed rulemaking as amended for debris penetration of off highway vehicles passes. The notice of proposed rulemaking as amended has been approved and shall be published in the Federal Register. Um, now, at that, this point, we have up to 10 minutes per commissioner for any closing, closing, closing remarks. It's so claiming my time. This notice of proposed rulemaking is a step forward in a long process of improving safety for off highway vehicles. Uh, the dangers of these vehicles are real and include not only debris penetration, but also overturning, collisions, and occupant ejection. CPSC's latest data show an annual, uh, annually an average of more than 700 deaths and an estimated 100,000 emergency room department treated injuries involving these vehicles. Reports of ROV UTV related fatalities and injuries involving debris penetration um, uh, prompted the CPSC to publish an advanced notice proposed rulemaking in May of 2021 to consider whether maybe unreasonable risk of injury and death associated with ROVs with respect to this issue. The staff found a total of 107 incidents in CPSC's databases between 2009 and 21 involving debris penetration hazards. In addition, from 2024 to 2016, there were three debris penetration recalls associated with ROVs consisting of approximately 55,000 recall vehicles, uh, 630 incidents of debris cracking or breaking through the floorboards and 10 injuries. I appreciate the hard work the staff has put into preparing this package, and I want to thank my colleagues for their engagement on this effort and their thoughtful amendments. I'm pleased that we're moving forward with this rule today and are making progress towards preventing unreasonable risks of injury and deaths associated with debris penetration in HOVs. Um, yield the remainder of my time and turn to Commissioner Biaco. Do you have a statement? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let me just state that I am thrilled that this particular commission was able to look at a lot of different views and get to the right answer together. Um, I, I oftentimes, until we have these discussions, uh, don't think of or don't necessarily focus on issues that my colleagues raise. I think Commissioner Feldman's point today about supply chain issues with, with regard to Mr. Trump's stockpiling amendment is a very good point. Um, I think that, uh, you know, making the points that I made earlier about reaching the end result with different reasoning is important um, because it's, I, I, I feel very strongly that not only should we be looking at what the staff presents, but it is our job as a commission to make sure that what the staff presents is inclusive and fully analyzed. And I think our um, using this particular rule today uh, to do that and, and making Starting that precedent is very important and I'm proud of the uh, agency staff and I'm proud of this commission for for going in that direction and getting to that result. So I look forward to that in the future and um, 
thank you all who participated um, for getting to this point. Thank you, Commissioner Biacco. Commissioner Feldman, did you have a statement? Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. A again, thank you to, to, to you and to, to uh, all of my colleagues uh, for working collabor collaboratively today. Uh, I'm excited to see this rule advance. Uh, I, I would note, uh, I believe we all received a, a letter from uh, the Recreational Off-Highway Vehicle Association um, that referenced uh, uh, its ongoing work in the voluntary standards uh, uh, body. Uh, I think that obviously this is something that that we would want to watch closely in parallel with our rulemaking advancing uh, to see uh, what what if anything uh, uh, they are able to uh, reach consensus on with with all the relevant stakeholders. Uh, that that path forward is, is always preferable because those uh, voluntary rules do tend to be uh, more durable than uh, final agency action on our part that would be subject to uh, potential challenge and, and, and delay in the courts. Uh, with expense to the agency uh, and, and, and to litigants across the board. Um, so with that, uh, again, happy to see this advance. Uh, I think we'll keep our, our eye on the voluntary standards activities. Um, and uh, like I said, during uh, some of my questions, uh, I, I'm uh, very much looking forward to reviewing the comments that we receive in response to this NPR. Thank you very much and, and great work, everybody. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Trumka. I think it's fantastic that we we're able to work together collaboratively and to move this forward unanimously. So, uh, I just, just great work and happy to see you moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, commissioner. And thanks again to all the staff and my fellow commissioners for their work on this uh, rule. And I do want to take a, a minute and thank our ASL interpreter as well. Providing more transparency and accessibility is important for the commission to do. And I think it was a good step forward today and look forward to, to more in the future. And as many of my uh, colleagues have noted, look forward to reading the comments and I encourage all stakeholders to uh, participate. That concludes today's decisional meeting of the Consumer Product Safety Commission and we are done. <laughs>